Ladies, it is our Monday night strategy session for our members only. Guys, it is December. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is December. I was just telling Dr. Grant that in October, we hit the full throttle button on everything that we were doing. Full throttle in our businesses, full throttle when it comes to our health, full throttle when it comes to our families. We wanted to make sure that in these last 90 days that we were going to go full throttle on each and everything that we set out to complete in 2018. We had said that in the last 90 days, we can write the book. In the last 90 days, we can lose the weight. In the last 90 days, we can restore that marriage. In the last 90 days, come on, y'all. We could write the business plan. In the last 90 days, you can get your social media right. In the last 90 days, you can get your following up. Come on, y'all. We were serious. And so we were like, okay, we need to go full throttle, finish strong, so that our residue would make room for us in 2019. And so tonight we're still going on the same, in the same flow, in the same spirit of finishing strong and going full throttle in your business, in your life, in your health. Amen. Amen. So I see you guys are still logging on. We have Dr. Stacy Grant for with us. And you guys think I was kidding. On one of the posts, I was like, after some mild stalking. We have Dr. Stacy Grant with us. She has literally just, she's just flew in from Long Beach. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Just flew in from Long Beach and she is still ready to pour out into each and every one of us. Make sure that you get onto Facebook, uh, onto our VIP group and encourage the rest of the members to log on. Do the same for those of you who are in our messenger group. Do the same. Get your notepad ready. We are so ready to talk about p 3 in your business to the next level. That is establishing purposeful. We put that first. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we could have said prosperous <laughs> and purposeful partnerships, but we started with purpose because when you are in purpose, that means that you are in your lane. There is no competition in your lane. There is no competition when it comes to what God intended when he created you. There is no competition in the ideas that God has downloaded into you and birthed on the inside of you. So we wanted to start with purpose because there is so much power in working in purpose and operating in purpose. So purposeful and prosperous because God, he intended for us to be what? The head. And not the tail. Come on to be <laughs> above. And Come not on, the right? <laughs> so this means that we don't love money, but we know that money does work for us. Amen. Amen. And so we're talking about purposeful and prosperous partnerships. So we have Dr. Stacy Grant with us on tonight, and I'm going to be reading her bio. I just want to encourage you guys to just relax and be open about your questions. You know, I was talking to someone the other day and they had asked me about CEO chicks. And one of the things that I said, and I said it so authentically, for those of you that know me and have had sessions with me, you know that I just kind of just, I, what you see is what you get. <laughs> and so one of the things that I said was, I really wish that I had this type of network back in 2004 when I had first moved to Florida from New York and was completely lost. I had these degrees and I had these credentials and I really didn't know what to do with it. All I knew was that I was, I was meant to be a business owner, that I was meant to be my own boss. I knew that I needed to fire my boss, right? Pastor uh, Jennifer, Coach Jen always talks about, uh, you know, calling in well. <laughs> so I needed to call in well and say, I just can't do this anymore. So I knew, I knew that I was meant to be my own business owner. I knew the vision, but I really didn't have the, the skill, the business skill at that time to build something mighty, to build something that was sustainable. And so uh, by the grace of God, 
I got from having a business that was operating out of a garage to having three thriving community mental health centers. But that came with a lot of mistakes and a lot of pain because I didn't have this type of support. I grew up in a, in a, in a environment where women, other women did not necessarily share their secrets. They weren't very open about what they did to get to where they were or some of the, the they didn't share their social capital. Those things did not happen. And so we really, my business partner and I, it was like the blind leading the blind. I wish there was a network like this back then to kind of give me the skills that I needed. Um, not only that, but when we're talking about strategic partnerships, there were times when I had an open opportunity to partner with major, major departments like the Department of Juvenile Justice. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I'm the owner or co-owner of Harmony Mental Health and Behavioral Services. And so we had these amazing opportunities to partner with huge agencies. And we saw it as these are people that are just trying to come and get our intellectual property. Like we don't want these people to know what we do. We don't want to share. We don't, we were really, really ignorant at the time. And so when our business started to hemorrhage and we started to kind of consolidate and go back to our original business plan, which was being a smaller private agency, I remember all those opportunities, all those major agencies that um, wanted to partner with us. And so today we are here to talk about how to P3 your business to the next level, how to establish purposeful and prosperous partnerships. So I am going to read the bio of our guest on tonight, Dr. Stacy Grant. I am so happy she is with us. And when you read her bio, you will know why I'm so excited. Now, I, I, I shared the links to her book. I shared the links to some other websites, so I know that you know her, but I'm gonna read her bio again. Dr. Stacy N.C. Grant is an award-winning international speaker, a best-selling author, the founder of Destiny Designers University and the producer of Faithpreneur Weekend 2018. Faithpreneurs are faith-based entrepreneurs who grow their wealth, generating practices around an affinity to God and faith. Faithpreneur Weekend 2018 launched an annual movement for faithpreneurs to create sustainable revenue, resources and relationships necessary for long-term sustainability and legacy wealth. That means your children get rich, <laughs> your children's children get rich, your great, great, great grandkids get rich. Yes, the whole entire family is working the business. Come on, come mm -hmm. on. Okay, privately, Dr. Stacy N.C. Grant often quotes this message from Gandhi. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. This is how she has built a global platform of service. Dr. Grant has spent countless hours quietly volunteering her time and service in the community through her civic engagement and youth mentorship. From working closely with local elected officials to support community outreach, to volunteering her time speaking with students in her local schools, to serving on PTA boards, Dr. Grant gets the greatest joy from serving others. She has received numerous awards from the New York State Senate, New York State Assembly, New York City City Council, Office of the Governor of New York, national and local organizations, including her most recent recognition as a woman of distinction by the Continental Societies Incorporated. Her body of distinction, her body of work is punctuated by receiving the 2016 Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award for volunteer service from our 44th president, Barack Obama, and appointment in 2017 as a fellow of the most excellent order of international experts. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming our guest tonight, Dr. Stacy N.C. Grant. <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> well, first, Shelly, I just want to say, hello, CEO chicks. I need you to put your cameras on. I need to see you. We're about to have a conversation. I don't care if you have rollers in your hair. I don't care if the wraps <laughs> to the side. This is a transparent conversation. I didn't come to play. I came to slay. We're going to have a conversation tonight and go through some exciting information. But I'm so proud of saying that I know this beautiful woman right here. I've literally... I'm going to date myself, watch you grow into an amazing boss lady. And to see the work that you're doing with CEO Chicks, to see the foresight that CEO Chicks had to create a network, because when we work together, we can grow together and we can slay together. It's not about one person winning. It's how many people can we bring together so we all succeed and we all bring the best of who we are to the marketplace and make the world better. We know that men can't get it right without us. So if CEO chicks are doing their job, then we're disturbing the marketplace. We're creating a shift and we're causing the role model for the young ladies who need it. There's too much cray cray and ratchetness going on in the world. And CEO chicks needs to be at the front of the movement of change so that our young women can see what's possible for them if they do the work and they stay consistent, and they understand that their value is not dictated by social media and other people, but by what is in the inside of them that they've been given to share on the outside. Okay, I know I got started already. No, 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 you need to just go. No. <laughs> that is all that it is about. And you know what? Because it's such an authentic and organic desire to see other women just get it all to see other women literally operating and giving their all, just like literally emptying themselves out in life. Our goal, Dr. Miles Moreau says it best, our goal is, should be to die empty. Absolutely. Die empty, right? Absolutely. And so it is amazing. And because of that, we are just growing exponentially. We are now in the UK. Awesome. <laughs> it is so amazing. We're going to be having a Dominate conference. In the UK, it's just I so amazing. It. We're trending on social media. As you guys saw, Sherry Shepard with her major weight loss. She took that picture to show everyone how she looked after what? I forgot how many days of no sugar. She is a celebrity. And what does she have on, y'all? A CEO chick wife beater yes oh, and so awesome. it's just so amazing what god is doing within the network this is a perfect time to just grab on and just just take it all in and release everything that we have on the inside of us and you know the amazing thing about it i have to stress it that is there is no competition no right in your lane Absolutely. Ride in your lane. Your gifts will make room for you. It is amazing. Think bigger. Dream bigger. Plan bigger. All right. Yes. Dr. Stacey Grant, I know I read your bio. Yes, I just need you to tell us what your day-to-day -day looks like. Absolutely. You, and and I just... <laughs> what's, the, what's, what's on the inside? What's in the background? So what's in the background? And, and one of the things I want to say before answering your question is in my book, I write about collaboration versus competition. If we can get that and, and not be in a space of thinking that if I share my skill or if I share information, this person's gonna steal it from me or if I do this, they might copy. What's for you is for you. And if you work with a mindset of collaboration, then you draw out and attract to yourself who you are. So if you're the bomb.com, if you're a CEO boss chick, then you're gonna attract other CEO boss chicks. But if you are, in a mentality of like, mm, I don't know, I'll play a little bit in the sandbox and then run and grab all my toys, then you're going to block the blessings that are available because you can run faster with the willing than trying to drag the ones you need to convince. Okay, so let me tell you about my day to day. That was <laughs> let me be obedient <laughs> and share. So the day to day, who I am, what I do starts first with my God given assignment. And faithpreneurs, you know, it's on my shirt in the background, what you read in the bio. It's about really understanding that I didn't want to show up in the world as just an entrepreneur because I'm blessed to be able to have built a platform of training and development that I work with entrepreneurs. I do personal growth and development training for my corporate clients. I have a youth empowerment series that we created. I am hired frequently to be a celebrity guest host for a lot of national conventions and events. I speak on platforms, I keynote, I work with the best of the best. I literally just finished doing a training call for Les Brown. That's one of my business partners and mentors. And 
what I've learned from him over the decades have been just amazing. But all of that means nothing if my soul is lost. And all of that means nothing if I'm not in alignment with my divine assignment. And in just prayer and thinking about what I wanted to zero in on, what I wanted Destiny Designers University to do, who I wanted to work with, I had to go back to what Marketing 101 says. And Marketing 101 says is create your niche. Know your niche. Know you, who you're there to serve. And a lot of people, because of who I am and what I do, assume that my platform and my brand is all about women. While it might be 90% women, I have 10% men that rock with me hard and would be very offended if they weren't included <laughs> in, the equation, in the equation. rather. So when I thought about it, Shelly, what I knew is that faith was the foundation of everything that I did. And God was building a whole piece with my faith as an example, because your faith is a testimony. And I can't tell people what to believe or who to believe in, but I won't deny my Christ. And it's not like I separate church and state. Everything that I do, every presentation that I give, every workshop, every facilitation, every keynote, every event that I MC, the glory of God is, is over me. So I don't show up and then say, okay, I'm putting Jesus on the shelf and I'm not going to let anybody know until afterwards that I'm a believer. No, people who tell me, you might want to tone down your belief and your faith. You might not want to talk about God too much because you might offend people and the corporate people won't hire you and this one won't hire you. I said, well, then they're not for me because what is for me, God has already blessed and preordained it. So I'm going to move in that vein of doing what I know he commanded me to do. So where doors open, he opens. Where doors shut, he shuts. I'm not in control. I am here to be a vessel and to be used. So faithpreneur was birthed as a result of understanding what the real work God wanted me to do. Because I've been in business for years, different iterations of our company, different projects and collaborations and partnerships that we've had. But the most important thing in this season in my life is to proudly proclaim from the mountaintops, this movement of faithpreneurs, faith-based entrepreneurs with a fidelity to God in organizing, managing, and running their businesses, and faith-based professionals who are still in corporate America, but looking to build another stream of income to their personal economy, transfer those skills that they have to be able to have a better retirement. That's who I talk to. That's who I, as the kids would say, that's who I rocks with. Because <laughs> if you don't understand faith, if you don't understand what the, oh, somebody has some music playing, you rejoicing, you praising, <laughs> what's going on up in there? <laughs> oh, five, one, three, two. <laughs> if so, everybody would mute your lines, okay, please. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sir. Yeah, somebody, somebody's line is open and we can't all your business. <laughs> but for me, it was being very clear that the people you are destined to serve, CEO Chicks, the people that will buy your products, your service, engage with you, they will hear your voice and they will know your voice. But if you don't call them by name, they'll never come to you. So I had a lot of different people coming to me for different things, but I got it straight that every day when I wake up, I want to talk to my faithpreneurs. Every day when I create a new program, when I open up a new service, when I create a new product, we're getting ready to release our limited release. Uh, can y'all see my, my faithpreneur? This is one of them. Oh, I love it. Shame, shameful plug. But yes, yeah, so <laughs> everything that I do, the clarity around it came through some bumps, came through some curves. But a day in the life of Dr. Stacey N.C. Grant is just a girl from the Bronx via Jamaica West Indies who now lives in Queens and gets to travel and do the thing that she loves most, which is empowering and changing lives through the application of action. That's the book that I wrote. That's what I believe, because we can sit back and talk about it all day long, strategize about it for 10 years, and still do nothing. So it's not about talking about it. It's about being about it and being able to turn that spark, turn that key, upset the apple cart, make you so uncomfortable that you can't sleep good until you move forward with the thing that God gave you to do. Because there's a season for everything. And if you don't move according to the speed of purpose, you can prolong the blessing that's already lined up and in store for you. And take that from somebody who learned that the hard way. My God, you just said something that was so like, and it could be, it could be somewhat controversial. You said move with the speed of purpose. purpose. I love that. So we this praying. idea that if it's purpose to happen, it'll happen regardless of how much time it takes. You know, oh. this idea that it'll be, it'll be there when I'm ready. Please speak on that. 
Oh yeah, let's so let's let's peel the onion on that one, right? Moving with the speed of purpose means that you understand that the thing that God has spoken over your life, the thing that you desire to do, the blessing that you want to be in the marketplace, doesn't just happen out of the blue sky and just appear. You have to work towards that. And the speed of purpose means you're putting in consistent action on a daily basis so that you're honoring the very thing that you feel that you were blessed with. That what's for you is for you, but you can delay it. If you're not moving according to the speed of purpose and the speed of purpose means that you know your assignment, you know what you have to do. Nobody has to tell you, a coach, a mentor, a speaker is either reminding you of the thing that you already know on the inside or exposing the thing that you've been running from. But you know the truth. And if you're moving according to the speed of purpose, you don't have to get fact checked by anybody because you know your truth. And the faster you move according to the speed of purpose is the more God can trust you with giving you more and open up new doors and new ways for you to expand your greatness on this planet. We hold back, and I can talk about this with passion because I've been there, done that. And let me tell you what I found out with a little bit of research. I was suffering from an illness, and some of you might be victim. It's called achievemophobia. Mm -hmm. Fact check me, <laughs> go look it up. Achievemophobia. Achievemophobia is the fear of success. That's what cripples most people. Not the fear of failure, it's the fear of success. What's the symptom? What's the, the symptom? symptoms of achievemophobia are you get ready to write that book. You got the outlines. You know what's been deposited in you. And it sits in a book. It sits in a closet. It sits in a bag. And you never get to the point of completion. Because in your mind, oh, what are they going to say about me? Is this going to measure up? to a New York Times bestseller. Somebody else wrote a book that was similar. Oh my goodness, what if this becomes a bestseller? What if I make a lot of money? What is my family gonna think? What are my friends gonna think? That I'm better than them? That, you know, who am I to, to write a book? Who do I think I am? Now, those, those are some of the symptoms of achievementphobia. Because you can call yourself a CEO chick, you can say that you want to do big business boldly and come up in the marketplace and dominate, but when it comes down to the wire, have you played full out? Are you still holding back? Because here's the truth of what I know, Shelly. Most CEO chicks can do what I did, get by on 75%, and nobody know the difference. They think you're the bomb.com. And you know on the inside of you, you're not playing full throttle. You know on the inside of you, you haven't really given 100% because you're afraid of how that's going to be perceived. You're afraid of how that dominance is going to show up in the marketplace. You're afraid about the very people in your family and your closest friends, what they will say or think about you if you play full throttle. So you hold back. You get by. On, on making it look good at 75%, but what would the world experience if you really put the pedal to the metal, if you really showed up in all your glory, if you really rocked out as a boss CEO chick, what would happen? But achievophobia keeps you playing it safe, where you know you can make a good income, you get some good clients, you can look glossy on social media, have to pop in posts, but you're not really playing full out. Oh, yeah, I could talk about it because I've been there, done that. I would feel the people around me being intimidated when I walked in a room. And everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be accepted. So you're like, well, maybe if I tone it down a little bit, I won't intimidate people. Because if you have a heart of service, if you have a heart of giving, if you have a heart of helping and collaborating, then you always want to extend. But people will misread your passion. They'll misread your confidence because confidence is not arrogance if you're coming from a place of service but we dial it back because we don't want to be air quote too much i'm only telling you what i know and i had to get to the point where if you can't stand my shine then go get a pair of shades boo <laughs> because i'm not going <laughs> to apologize for being who i am because that's how God made me. And if I shrink in myself, then I'm not showing up as an example for another woman. If I pull back and hold back, how can I tell somebody else to be their best, to be a boss, to be a CEO chick, if I'm not willing to stretch into the uncomfortable areas of my own personal growth and development so that I can show up as the best version of me? 
Well, we bind achievement phobia right now. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. We bind it. We get you some sunglasses if you can. S O N. Not if you went S O N glasses. Come on now. Ooh, All absolutely. right. So we are talking about purposeful and prosperous partnerships. When does a business owner like what is that sign where it would be an indication that this is something a business owner sh should consider. So let's start there. How do we know that this is a consideration for us as business owners? Immediately. <laughs> immediately. And here's why I say immediately. The, depending on the level of development your business is in will determine the kind of partnership that you're ready for. But in this day and age, I want everybody to be thinking about collaboration and partnership. Why? Take it from the big bosses, FedEx and Kinko's, Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins. Like if the big corporate conglomerates can see that they have to now start working together and collaborating, what about those medium-sized businesses or those who've hit the six-figure mark and beyond? We can't do it alone. And that's one of the mantras that I live by. You cannot do this thing called life alone. So as a business, if you're newly formed and you're getting your market share, you're putting your stake in the ground, you're letting everybody know you're a CEO chick, you're telling them about your products, your business, or your service, what other relatable services are within collaboration mode? Right? And when I say collaboration mode, they don't have to live where you are with technology. You can collaborate with someone anywhere in the world, but are they offering something similar, something that complements your business? So Baskin Robbins chose to partner with Dunkin' Donuts because the likelihood of you wanting to have a donut with some ice cream, that's like a cake and ice cream combination. It made sense that there would be some synergy there, that a Popeye's and a Burger King would collaborate, it's fast food. Some people might not eat meat or red meat, but they might want some chicken wings. So they came together. When you think about a FedEx King Co, they came together because somebody has to copy something to mail it. It just made sense. It was a complementary business. So look at what complements your business. If you are a baker and you're baking the best sweet potato pie this side of the Mississippi, right? And you have the greatest recipe. You might want to find out if there is a quaint coffee shop that might be in the area that you can collaborate with. They can take your pie and have the pie featured in their coffee shop and you both make money off of a collaboration of bringing two businesses together. So you have to look at where you are in the development of your business and then what other collaborative opportunities are there that will complement your business. Because if you can create that win-win, then you start doing a mini version of Amazon, of Walmart, of Walgreens. It's all of these smaller companies collaborating together to add complementary services or products within their market share. So don't wait too long to consider it. Just think about what you offer. If you're a shoe store and you're designing the, the new red bottoms, you know, I think I'm about to design some blue bottoms, right? So when I design my blue bottoms, what would complement that? If women buy shoes, women also buy bags. So maybe I work with someone who has a designer line of bags or maybe it's jewelry. And I, and I talked to them and said, you know, let's, let's try out what it would look like if we collaborated together. And you don't have to go all in at first. You create a memorandum of understanding. And we want to write that down, MOU, Memorandum of Understanding. I advise you that anything you decide to do as a result of this conversation, you put it in writing. Because if you don't put it in writing, there is open area for things to get misconstrued, misunderstood, or cause problems down the line. But you can have an initial conversation as exploratory. And that's the word I would invite you to use. If you're thinking about this and you're like, hmm, that makes sense. You know, I should call such and such. The first thing you should say, I would love to have an exploratory conversation with you 
about collaborating, of what synergy there is between our businesses, our services, or our products. And then once you have that exploratory conversation in your spirit, you will prayerfully have some discernment on if it's a fit. And if it's not a fit, it's okay. You just move on to the next conversation and you get to the point when you feel like this could be a fit, we could actually do some business together. Let's create a memorandum of understanding for a trial period. I believe in trial periods because if you lock yourself into something for the length of like a marriage, then there's too much anxiety and drama trying to break it if it's not working. But there's no harm in a 90 day trial period. When we opened up the CEO chick call tonight, Shelly talked about the fact that when the fourth quarter started, and I happen to love the start of the fourth quarter because of my birthday month, that there was a definitive decision of what could be done in, in the last quarter of the year. 90 days is a good round number that you can do a trial. You can make it 60 days, you can make it 30 days, but you create a memorandum of understanding and you outline what each person is bringing to this partnership. So what are you gonna be responsible for? Be very clear, if you're baking the pies and you're bringing it to the coffee shop, how many pies are you supplying on a weekly basis? What is the percentage of the sale of the pie that the coffee shop is gonna receive? How will the percentage be paid? It covers all the details of what that particular memorandum of understanding is set out to do. And that just covers you from getting to the point where you would end up in any sort of litigation because something didn't go right. And I would advise you to have an attorney. All CEO chicks need to have an attorney, either on retainer or speed dial, that you can run memorandum of understandings through. And then when you level up, and maybe you're not a, a startup, you're an existing business that's saying, look, that's Stacey, we need to do something different. We need to break the six-figure ceiling to the seven-figure ceiling. So we need to do bigger things. We need to expand. We need to bring on some different sorts of investments. Then you have to look at joint venture agreements. And joint venture agreements require you to have another level of legal binding documentation. And you definitely want to have the advice of an attorney so that everyone entering into that joint venture is on the same page and it breaks down everything from what the joint venture is being built to do to how the payouts go and if the joint venture is dissolved what are the steps in which this joint venture has agreed to dissolving that and if a partner wants to leave a joint venture and sell their shares to someone else there's a provision for that so i know i'm getting into a lot of the jargon behind it but i want to give you a roadmap and understanding that there are different levels of partnership and collaboration. You have to decide which one fits for you, but I feel that you're ready for it from day one that you have an idea that there might be a low level collaboration that you can implement because Rome wasn't built in a day and there's nothing new under the sun. So if you're open to having conversations, you could build a business faster with the right partnerships and leverage the right relationships and it will open up doors that you would not have been invited into had it not been for the collaboration or the partnership. So I applaud you for even being a part of CEO Chicks because that's one way of starting to create relationships and collaboration is listening and learning from the other CEO Chicks within the network and you might even collaborate with another CEO Chick. And that allow you an opportunity to work it through like a trial run to say, hmm, let's see if we can collaborate and do something together. Maybe it might be an event, a real low level, not a heavy investment. You do a small reception, you get to find out how the other partner works, if they're on time, if they're reliable, if they follow up, if they work the way that you work. And then if it doesn't work, no harm, no foul, no judgment. It was one event prayerfully successful, but you know it won't be a part two because you just don't gel or fit together or you're on the same lane. It's not a judgment on a person because you have to know someone's personality type. That's a training that I do with Destiny Designers University. A lot of people whoo, go through countless painful hours of working with staff people and partnerships that they don't understand their personalities. So the thing that they're trying to get from them, they will never get because they don't understand what motivates them to work. 
and to get results. So that's a whole nother layer of understanding how to choose a team, how to choose a partnership, how to know who it is that you should be working with that complements your gifts, your skills, and your talents. But it's never too early to start considering a partnership. Just make sure that you have a memorandum of understanding. If it's a starting business, ground level, you haven't really established a solid foundation yourself, but you just want to explore doing something collaboratively with another business, just have a memorandum of understanding. If you're past that point, you're an existing business, you have your infrastructure in place and you're ready to start talking joint venture, then you definitely want to create the terms of that joint venture. You can even get some of these things online. Google University has everything. They have companies that have sample forms of joint venture, but I advise you to have an attorney to look over the documentation and to make sure that it's outlined in a way that you don't have to go through a lawsuit. You can go through arbitration if there's something that happens, unfortunately, because partnerships don't all work out. But that's why you have written documentation to cover you in the event that it happens. That's the worst case scenario, but if it does, you're prepared. And then if you're really at that next level and you're past the joint venture and then you're talking about mergers and acquisitions, then that's a whole nother story of being able to dissolve two companies into one and create a whole new entity and structure. And there definitely is a need for an attorney at that point uh, in the juncture so that you all can consolidate assets and it, it, that's just a whole nother level. But play big, start somewhere. And don't limit yourself to thinking that you have to make six figures before you can have a collaboration. It could be kids on the block selling lemonade and another one's baking cookies. They can start the collaboration right there and learn how to work together and how to split profits and be able to get the word out faster because you have more people on the ground doing the work. So I know that was very quick and I went through a lot because I know we have a timeline for no, our that was, tonight, that, but I hope that was helpful. Just keep on flowing. <laughs> we are, we are <laughs> absorbing. I'm trying to write down as much as I can and still maintain eye contact with you. And so basically what you just laid out is that partnerships is really like it's on a spectrum. It's like a developmental process that we shouldn't be looking at it as if we're jumping into a merger. And I think what happens is that when people think of partnerships, the anxiety comes from giving 50% of my company or allowing right. people to have access to my intellectual property. But if we do it strategically, like you said, and do it in phases, starting with the exploratory stage and maybe some joint ventures, then a collaboration, get an MOU in place. And then when those things are prosperous and you're seeing that mm -hmm. this is, there's some great success here, the synergy is amazing, the brands are just married and they're just dancing with one another, then it's at that time that you can consider a merger, acquisitions, et cetera. We'll talk a little bit more about that. One of the things that you said just now was you don't need six figures to collaborate. Mm -hmm. Where should we be financially as a business before we start to even consider these collaborations with other companies? Do we need to be on point financially? Can you be broken, struggling and hemorrhaging and trying to establish a collaboration then to get out of that place? What are your thoughts on where should we be mm -hmm. as a business financially before entering into these, these stages of development? That's a, great, that's a great, great question. And I wanna start with where you said, if you're bleeding and hemorrhaging, right? Every company goes through some blood, sweat and tears, literally. And a collaboration could actually help you out of the hemorrhaging if you're willing to be transparent with that particular exploratory conversation. So that, that's where it gets into, if you're gonna approach someone for a partnership and your business is not functioning in the black and you're like, oh my gosh, we're about to fold. We're about to throw this thing in. What got into me to start this business? Why did I choose this? I could make more if I go back to corporate America and command the salary. All those thoughts go through your mind when you're in crisis, but actually necessity is the mother of invention. If you can think about someone who has a complementary business service or product that if you were in the time of crisis to collaborate with and come up with a product, a low hanging fruit that you could work on together to bring in revenue that could actually turn the page 
from you being in crisis to you being able to function again and reduce debt or reduce the areas that have been leaking out of your business. But that requires a very transparent conversation in that exploratory stage to say, look, you know, right now, I don't know what third quarter is going to do. I don't know if I'll be able to meet certain obligations and I'm not giving up on my hopes and my dreams. And I know that this is something that God has given me to do, but I need help. And here's what I want every CEO chick to write down big, bold on their phone, in their notebooks, over their mirror. You ask for help, not because you're weak. You ask for help because you want to remain strong. So I'm going to say it again. You ask for help, not because you're weak. You ask for help because you want to remain strong. And we have to get over ourselves. We have to get out of our own way. If that's the, the part of the season that we're in, that we need help, that we're struggling, there are peaks and valleys in the development of life and there are peaks and valleys in the development of a business. And if you're at the point where things are not looking good, how can you put on this smart CEO chick hat and say, who can I, who can I partner with? okay, my book that I wrote, it's not moving. I'm not selling enough copies to make enough revenue. Maybe if I partner with this bookstore, we can do some sort of book drive. I'm just talking off the top of my head, but you have to think of something that can bring in some immediate revenue to reduce the bleeding, to start healing the wound. Because the moment you take action, then your juices start flowing. Right? Then you're like, whoa, I didn't think about that. And then when you collaborate with someone else, they're thinking of new ideas that you might not have been thinking of. And both of you can win together. Because nine times out of 10, the person that you're collaborating with, they might be hemorrhaging too. So the two of you could be the aspirin to solve the pain that you're going through, but it requires an authentic and transparent exploratory conversation. Let's just sit and hammer this thing out. How can we take what we have and create some immediate revenue? What, what can we do right now with the skill, with the product, with the service, and create something immediately today using social media, all these different things that are out here in the world? How can we take that and run with it? How can we take that as CEO chicks? It doesn't mean that you don't have a bad day. As CEO chicks, it doesn't mean that one month you might not have five cents to go get yourself a lollipop. It means that you're growing through to the next best version of who you are and what you're delivering to the marketplace. And when you're in that season, you can either give up or you start giving in to your greatness. You can either give up or you can start giving in to your greatness. And your greatness means you don't quit. You come up with a new idea. That's what an entrepreneur does. You come up with ideas, you come up with solutions. So it's better to work with somebody in that moment who's just as creative, who's just as fabulous, that might be on hard times too, and say, look, what can we do to get out of this crap? We're too talented for this. Right. right. And you work a partnership, you work that conversation. So that's for the person that is not six figures. Now, you might be at a place where you're not at six figures, but you're not making any profit. You're like barely breaking even. So that's still a reason to talk to someone else, to figure out, just do your research. Look at what we have out in the world as examples. I keep bringing up the Baskin Robbins and the Dunkin' Donuts and the FedEx and the Kinko's for a reason. These are multi-billion dollar corporations who could have chosen to continue to stay doing the same thing and they end up like Blockbuster, who's out of business. Don't you remember when there was a Blockbuster on every corner? That's right. But what happened? Netflix was like, we see the future and we're going to start collaborating and we're going to get into a relationship with Amazon. Some of these kids don't even know what a blockbuster is. If you I say, know. I'm like, what? what's that? <laughs> Who a blockbuster? Because they didn't see what was coming. They weren't willing to have the conversation to say, how do we shift Barnes and Nobles going out? I would never in my mind have thought that Barnes and Nobles would be struggling. They started adopting the online opportunities a little later in the game. You as a CEO chick have to look at the trends in your business, in your niche, in your area, and see what's causing some of the, either the hemorrhaging or the flatlining. And what do you need to inject inside your business so that you can start moving in a different direction? 
And collaboration to me is one of the best ways that you can do that, whether it's a MOU, whether it's a joint venture, whether it's a merger and acquisition, depending on where you are in your development. I'm gonna use one example with you. I am in a joint venture with three other boss ladies. We all have our businesses and we came together in the space of minority and women-owned business enterprise so that we can open up some more doors and really prove that women can work together because that's the other part of the conversation. So when people meet us, they're like in awe that all four of us could put down our egos because we really came in with no ego. We were introduced by a mutual friend that said, how do four of you not know each other? And we ended up finding out we had some people in common and sat down and talked about some opportunities that were approaching. And we we're like, it just makes sense. Sometimes women, we complicate things. Men create partnerships on a dime every single day just to do business, just to have access to certain things. But we want to evaluate, do I like her? I don't know if I like how her hair is. She don't have on the right nail polish. Mm. I don't know. We come with all kinds of reasons to hate on each other or to second guess the ability of who we are as women. When men see the green, they're like, if I, in, if I see you and you have a certain skill set here, you can do that. Let's come together real quick so that we can go after this money. They don't have to like each other. They can barely know each other, but they can sure enough sign a joint venture agreement on the spot right. so they can go after the money. We have to get over ourselves and be able to see the vision, see the picture, see the opportunity. And that's what the four of us did in our joint venture. Now we had to get to learn each other's personalities. We've had to get to understand how each of us work because we do certain things different in our own business. But we made a decision in that first conversation that we had that even if it gets difficult, even if we might be upset about how anything that we say or do rubs the other person, we're not going to let it fester. We're going to address it head on as boss chicks, right? We're going to address it head on so that we don't let anything get in the way of the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is we came together so that we can expand our reach and make bigger contracts and bigger money that we could do by ourselves. So that requires burying ego, burying self, and saying, what are the facts at hand and how do we mobilize ourselves that we can take advantage of what's in the marketplace because the window of opportunity is only but for a certain time with particularly in the minority women-owned business enterprise space particularly for a period of time so you can't wait to fall in love and have a romance for three years for the joint venture before you get the work done you have to do it and build a plane while flying it but you have to be willing to have honest and transparent discussions along the way as you're deciding how you're going to purposefully prepare yourself for these kind of partnerships to pee through your life. And it's a process, but you can do it. And every CEO chick in this network should be doing it and you should be starting with the people in the CEO chick network. To start right here is what you're saying, to start, start right here. Right here. You've been in conversations, you've been on these Monday night calls, you have other private chats, you're getting to know people from all over the different chapters that are part of CEO Chick. Reach out to somebody, have a real conversation and say, how, well, are you at the point in your business where you'd be open to trying out a small event collaboration? Doesn't have to be a full blown, I'm telling you my bank account. We didn't do that for our joint venture. We don't have to go into our financials. You will have to have a point where you discuss what the monetary contribution will be for each partner, but that doesn't have to be where you start. You decide what's, what's the purpose, what's the end goal for this memorandum of understanding, for this joint venture, for this merger of acquisition. You figure out what it is that you want and then back your way into how you get there. Because then that clarifies what kind of disclosure that you need to have. You don't have to be intimidated thinking that they all, oh, they don't know all my dirty laundry, no. But you wanna be in a position where you're having conversations with people that you know, like, and trust, which I would hope would be everybody who's a CEO chick, right. but then you have to find the synergy between businesses. Right. Because every business is not gonna to work together when you're talking about just making sense. If you're gonna go after a market share, it has to be something that complements the other. 
who, who, who. I, I, I don't even know <laughs> <laughs> where to go from here. I mean, my God. Uh, okay, let, let, let me go here there. This, first of all, this is awesome. And I cannot write on, uh, it's, it's so much. I'm full. We are full. There are questions that I need to get to. Uh, However, I want to touch on something you said. You said asking for help is not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. I think that asking someone to potentially partner with them and enter into a collaboration is not necessarily a sign of weakness either. That is an opportunity for two people to really maximize their prosperity. And so we have to be comfortable with going to other business owners um, to possibly collaborate. There are two things that I want to touch on um, before we we take some more questions. I was listening to a podcast just recently and the po- in the podcast it says, what, where did this idea come from of small business? Who created that term? Mm. And then the guy said, ask a small business owner how small their business is. When mm. they're losing sleep, ask them how small their business is. When they are sweating, blood, sweat, and tears trying to get payroll met. Ask them at that Mm -hmm. point just how small their business is that we have to really stop, not necessarily using that term because obviously there's an operational definition for small business for a reason, but that doesn't need to be our mindset. Exactly. Having said that, does a small business, should a small business only consider collaborating and partnering with other small businesses? Should minority-owned businesses consider partnering and collaborating with other minority-owned businesses? When do we know that we have something so rich that we can go into a Fortune 500 company, for example, and say, I have an answer? Because you talked about, don't give up, think of another idea. Then you said, think of another solution. That means that we are the answer and our businesses are the answers. And so, when do we know that our small business could potentially partner with this great, huge business because we are the answer? I just want you to kind of speak on that because I want to make sure that we don't leave here thinking that it needs to be done on a level that we think that we are on. You just answered the question. When you think you have it, you share it, right? There, there's, no, there's no waiting period. I, I'm so past that waiting till this or thinking it has to be that life lesson two in my book is it's not about being perfect. And I want everyone to write this down. It's not about being perfect. It's about getting started. So you have something to perfect. And every life lesson I talk about in the book is not one that just sounds good. And I want to pontificate and share. It's what I live because I know what that procrastination can do. And you can be paralyzed by that spirit of procrastination and never make it to the mountaintop of completion. So If you feel you have a solution, if you know you are the answer, then you go ahead and present that to the Fortune 500 company or to uh, whatever seems like it might be out of scope or out of reach to where you currently are with confidence and conviction. I can sell ice to an Eskimo, okay? Because I, my family teases me, I can be wrong and strong because confidence (laughs) is what... (laughs) confidence is what people are attracted to so because i work with integrity because i'm a faith entrepreneur i'm not going to do things outside of it because i know that i have the ability to convince you about my passion because you will feel it in your bones and be on fire when i'm done and that's the level of confidence and conviction that you have to approach for what it is that you want to do so i'll just be very transparent with you i have a an idea that I started reaching out to big time fortune 500 and I got caught up with some other things. And I just reminded myself, I was like, girl, you got to send out that proposal and get, get a conversation. What's the worst that can happen. You try to meet with Amazon and they shove you off, but you might bump into one of their affiliates. What's the worst that can happen. Go for it. And you'll learn in the process how to sharpen your presentation, how to come prepared with some more details that might have been able to seal the deal. It's all practice. I call it market research. But you have to be confident enough in yourself because people can feel and and take from you your level of belief in your very own self. Like if you're coming to me, I use the kids that sell the candy. 
So the kids that aggressively run to me, miss, 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 do you have a dollar? Um, you know, we're raising money for the basketball team. And if you give me good personality and you come strong, I'm like, all right, all right, son, I see you. I'll give you a dollar. But if you come in love, like Snuffleupagus, ma'am, we raising money for the basketball. You got to learn how to build up your confidence and conviction in a way that's so contagious that people want to drink of your cold water because they are on fire. Doesn't matter how big they are. It doesn't matter how intimidating it might seem. You know you're the answer. You know you have the solution. And while you're out here thinking about it, somebody else is implementing. So you have to make up your mind that you're ready to do it. Bottom line. What do we have to do? What do we do to get there? So when you have decided, I am the answer, this is a great idea, my intellectual property, this is unique, this is a great thing, Amazon will definitely, I could see it, mm -hmm. this will be an amazing collaboration. What does a person do? What are the steps to getting in that door? How do you get your foot in the door? How do you find out who to reach out to? You know, you can put this amazing proposal together, but you need that opportunity to sell it. What does a business owner do to get to that, to that point? Oh, I love that question. So let me back up a little bit. So there's two ways to approach it. If you have the capacity and the wherewithal to protect your intellectual property before any proposition that you might give, I advise that you do that. I own four registered trademarks on my intellectual property because that's what a lot of people fear, that if they were to write a proposal, if they share a good idea, that a company can just take it and they actually can because if you don't own it that's open right to to be able to take so that's just a sidebar for any of you who are in position to protect your intellectual property or your patents or your trademarks that you're creating for an, a physical product i would say go ahead and do that if you're not in position to do it but you still have a great idea something that you want to propose you give the teaser you give the appetizer that would open up the conversation for them to be curious enough to come in. And then you create a non-disclosure agreement that you can get off the internet. That if you're sharing some information, that this is information, it's like the beginning of the intellectual property, speaking with an intellectual property attorney, this the beginning of that sort of paperwork that you would just say, you know, I have an NDA here that I need you to sign. They're looking at you like, oh, they're serious because they know that language and any big corporate body knows the importance of protecting certain things in a conversation or an agreement. So they will look at you differently and say, oh, this is not just a mom and pop situation. They're coming armed and ready with knowledge and knowledge of how to protect themselves as well as knowledge of how they can share something that could potentially work for us. So that's a bigger conversation that we can go into tonight, but I would definitely explore. I'll give you a recommendation. My trademark attorney has a great website with a lot of pointers and tips for you to do certain things yourself without hiring an attorney. And it's trademarkready.com. It's trademarkready.com. You can just tell him Dr. Grant sent you, but he has a blog and a newsletter and some information that would be helpful uh, to you as you explore going after those big knots in your stomach, knees knocking, palms sweating uh, opportunities that you have yourself protected and walk in. If it's something really, really big, you want to go in making sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. If it's something of a more casual opportunity, then the non-disclosure agreement might work, but that's something you have to plan out. So you still want to do it, but you want to make sure you do it with due diligence so that you protect yourself, your ideas, your brilliance, when you're going with that level of conversation. Who do we target? Who do we target? The tar person that we're targeting to sit okay. at that boardroom and, 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 sh and sell this idea to. So it depends on what you're selling. So if you are, let me use an example. Let's say you want to get into a certain product in Walmart. You have to look through on their website to see who the, uh, what department? Because one of my girlfriends just got into Walmart. They're not, uh, it's going to come to me in a minute. But they have a special department for new products mm -hmm. and review of new products and opportunity. And then there's also the diversity and inclusion departments that are looking to create space for minority and women-owned business enterprises. 
so they can have these utilization goals met of how they're actually taking women and minorities and bringing them in as suppliers. So the supplier and diversity, look for those sorts of departments if you have a physical product that you wanna place in one of those sorts of companies. And if you just keep scrolling through to see who is in charge of seeing, you make phone calls, you get, and here, here's a real tip, Shelly. Always make friends with the secretary. Make good friends with the secretary. They are the gatekeepers to getting to the decision makers. And I don't understand how some people call and they just rude or overlook the secretary or the admin. They hold the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> So you have to be nice to the, to the secretary, like, girl, how you doing today? Oh, what's going on? Oh, I like that name. And you make friends with the admin and the secretary, and they'll give you all the, they'll spill the tea on who you need to talk to. Like, I really would love to have this meeting, have this great idea. Or here's the real winner. Now, this one is the game changer for the night. We wrap up. The best way to put yourself in position for opportunities like that is to add value and be of service. So before you go asking for stuff, figure out a way you can get yourself in by offering a service. That's offering good. a way to be a blessing because then you make yourself irreplaceable. Oh my God. It's that right there, y'all can pay me for when you cash in on the big one, okay? That is so good. <laughs> get That's in there and offer service. Offer to build a relationship. See, a lot of times everybody just wants to go ahead and sign the deal and get the big money. They're not willing to build a relationship. I say it all the time. If I were to evaluate my relationship currency, I'm a trillionaire. But those relationships weren't built overnight. Those relationships were built over years of adding value. Doing so if what? I make a phone call, and I asked for something, it's like, oh, I got you, before I can even finish the sentence because I inserted myself with a way of being of service. So I served my way to the top. But you have to be willing to be humble enough that you know you have something good. If you know you have something valuable to offer, give them a little taste of it so they want more. What do you think they do when you go to the food courts and they give you them little pieces of general tile chicken and all them other things? They try to let you taste it so you come back and get the whole meal. Right. Well, you give them a little sample of your brilliant CEO chicks. So they want to find out more about how they can engage with you. Serve your way to the top. You said that you are a relationship. And when you, when you think about relationship currency, you are a trillionaire. And I know that we are running short on time. How did you do that? How did you get to that? What did you, did you make sure that every month you attended six networking like like specifically what did you do to get there i'll give you one example because we are getting ready to close out i, I get to work with les brown susan taylor dr george frazier so many and i'm not saying it to impress you but to really impress upon you as we would say the importance of serving the very first time I wanted to go to the Frasionet conference, at that time, that was the premier networking conference for African Americans. If you didn't go to Frasionet, you weren't anybody. Like this, this was the place where all the Dr. Miles Monroe came every year to teach. Les Brown was there every year to teach. Susan Taylor was like, this was the place to be. And in my early years in business, I was like, oh, I'm going to be on that stage one day. I know I'm going to train there. I just, I got to get there. But the first time the conference came up, my son was, I think my firstborn might have been just getting out of kindergarten. And it was just a lot of finance. We had him in private school. I didn't have the financial capacity to really register because I had to make a choice on where money went. And if you're in business, you know, you got to look at the bottom line and figure out how to juggle, how to make things work. So I said, you know what? I'm going. I'm showing up. And my husband looked at me like, you going where? You don't have a hotel room. You didn't register how are you doing this? I said, I have family in Atlanta. I'll figure it out. I'm getting down there. And I showed up at that conference and I volunteered. I volunteered a registration because I had a background. One of my companies was event planning. I was going to do this with my eyes closed. And I added so much value because they were all a little disjointed, discombobulated, try to do this and do that. And everybody wanted to get close to the celebrity. So they weren't focused on the service of the attendees. I jumped right in, organized everything had everybody working like I was the one running the shop. At the end, they're like, well, who is she? Like, where'd she come from? 
They didn't even know my name until the end of the conference. They were like, okay, you coming next year? <laughs> like, we need you. And then it just so happened how God works, the timing of after that, I ended up meeting less. I ended up signing up for his program. The second time I came back, I came back as a speaker. And then it just mushroomed from there. And I started doing workshops. Now, almost a decade later, for the last seven, eight years, I've been a celebrity guest host for Freightionet. But it started with service. It started with me believing enough in myself and what I possessed that I showed up with no money, without a registration, without a hotel room, and got all three covered as soon as I hit ground and added value. Add value. What God has for you, he has for you. But there's a training ground and there's an appointed time of growth and development. Time is a joke to God. That's all I can tell you. Because if I had it my way, things would have been different a whole lot of ways along the way. But you just have to wait the wait out. CEO Chicks, you've been given something. You have greatness in you. You have a gift. You have a skill. You have a talent. You're running businesses, programs, and services. There'll be good days. There'll be challenging days. But you stay the course. Do your work. Let God work and watch what happens. You got this. You just have to believe that what's next for you is waiting for you to unveil itself. And P3 your way to success through service. Oh my God. Serve your way up. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so just to balance this out, you told us what you did and, and you're working with the greats of the greats. And we know you're not name dropping. We know we see your success. We read about your success. We are humbled by you sowing your time and talent into us on tonight. Um, because you shared something that you did great that got you there, can you share like a major epic, I don't call them failures, but those moments where you're like, whoa, specifically mm -hmm. as it relates to strategic partnership, oh. can you share something that you may have done like totally oh. off that, you know, you want to make sure none of us ever repeat oh. as we set out to develop those, those relationships? Absolutely. So... <laughs> There's so many running through my mind. I don't know if we have time. I don't call them mistakes. I call them expensive learning curves. So here's one that almost, I almost lost my shirt. And that was taking on employees too early because payroll is real and it will bankrupt you if you're not ready. But I didn't have any sort of real vetting process on hiring people and enrolling people on the team properly. It was me trusting that they would have the same desire to see me win as I had to see them win. Wow. And that was not the truth. And that, God let me learn that lesson. I was like, oh Jesus, could we have not shortened that? But to really be clear on having probationary periods from anyone that you bring on your team before you give them a dime have a probationary period and have an enrollment process and a procedural manual in place to sustain what you're building because setting up payroll, taxes, everything that comes with that, that can sink you faster than a brick. So be very careful and use the spirit of discernment on who it is that needs to be a part of your team because not everybody deserves a seat in your front row. That's right. You know, that's something else I, I talk about in the book. So that's one. Two, oh, don't let pimp people pimp your talent. You heard me. Don't let people pimp your talent. Be careful not to throw per your pearls amongst swine. Not everybody that smile, smile, want to see you be great. Right. So no shame, no foul. But you have to really go into prayer. I don't know what your prayer regimen is. I don't know what your beliefs are. But if you believe that God is real, if you believe that you're not here on your own, take the time to pray on who you invite for the journey. Because not everyone that came with you can stay with you. And you will outgrow people along your journey. And that's fine. They're for a reason, a season of maybe not a lifetime, but take the time to really pray for the spirit of discernment because that's the worst feeling 
is to be building and growing and not knowing that you had Judah sitting at the table My working God. against you. Oh, and it's painful. Yeah. So I never want any of you to go through that. So take the time and then also create some buffers, CEO chicks. Don't be the person to hire. Don't be the person to hire. If you're at the point where you're like, well, you know, we're not that big yet that I have like tons and tons of employees, find one of your friends that's in human resources. Find somebody who has a certain skill set in HR or something close to it that they can screen your talent before you engage with them. When they meet you, it should be after they have been well screened so you can make a final decision if you feel that they fit for the vision of your company and where you're going. My God. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> CEO chicks, this is this is going to require a replay. <laughs> it's going to require playing back and taking more notes. Dr. Stacy Grant, you have blessed us on tonight. We have learned about the importance of partnerships. We have learned that we don't have to wait. Wait for what? Right? We don't have to wait. We don't have to be at a certain place in our business. We just have to make sure that we have made the assessments, the necessary assessments to determine who can complement what we are doing. We talked about uh, partnerships, not necessarily being a merger right off, right off the bat, but it takes time that you can start out with um, a collaboration. Uh, well, you said a, an exploratory. I love that. An exploratory mm -hmm. conversation to talk about how we can benefit one another, maybe have a joint venture together, event collaboration, and then slowly build your way into a merger if that's what it ends up being. You mm -hmm. talked about not necessarily having to be at a certain financial place to develop these partnerships. You talked about making sure that we are protecting ourselves in the form of establishing a memorandum of, of understanding where it lines out what the different parties are doing, what the different responsibilities are, mm -hmm. what the finances are gonna look like, making sure that we have an attorney to review those MOUs, to make sure that everyone is held accountable with something that is in writing. You talked about the importance of of, of protecting our intellectual property by using, um, you, I think you called it a disclosure. Um, non-disclosure agreement. The non-disclosure mm -hmm. to make sure that when you are presenting ideas to potential partners, that they are not able to just run with it. Talked about protecting trademarks. You gave us a website, trademarkready.com, mm -hmm. um, that we can use as a resource. We also have a, an attorney that is a CEO chick that is also open and willing to assist with that as well. Oh my God, you dropped so many different quotes. You said <laughs> that um, necessity is the mother of invention. When you ask for help, it's not because you are weak, but it's because you want to remain strong. You said it's not about being per perfect, but starting something that you can perfect. It could go on and on. Oh my gosh, my notes are all over the place. Um, Let's see, you talked about the, when we talked about the major keys about really developing powerful um, partnerships, you talked, I said, cause you said that you are a, when it comes to relationship currency, you are a trillionaire. So you stress the fact or stress the importance of us really mm -hmm. focusing on building our social capital, our relationship currency. We talk about this all the time. And you talked about how important it is, especially when we're talking about collaborating and asking people to come on board, sponsor our events, et cetera. And um, you said that you focus on making yourself valuable, getting your foot in the door, making sure that they know you, that you serve that you serve your way to the top, that you serve your way to getting noticed. And that was so, so powerful. And then you said, always make friends with the secretary. That's right. Always, always. make friends with the secretary. <laughs> and you said that they hold the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> they oh, wow. It's, and it's so much. And I know that we haven't even gotten to mergers and acquisitions. You know, we just barely touched the service. Uh, the, touch the surface as it relates to building purposeful and prosperous partnerships. But 
with what we talked about today, we have some action steps and that is for business owners to sit down and take a look at other companies. I love what you said about starting right here within the network. Yo chicks, that's right. Yes, and, and it's about collaboration. That was a part of the vision, so that's just awesome. But really looking at what are those potential partnerships, making sure that we are not limiting our thought process and starting to write down a list. Find out what other people are doing within the network, within your community, within your industry, across the world. It doesn't have to be even within the same state, but just starting that process of thinking about those individuals and then planning our engagement and how we're going to engage them to start that exploratory conversation. That is awesome. Is there any last minute keys, anything that you want to drop on us as we close this call tonight? The first thing I would say is thank you. Thank you, Shelly, for this wonderful opportunity to just be in the space of yourself and these awesome CEO chicks. I wish that, I don't know what the rules are, but I like to interact with people. So if they can just unmute their video to say, hey. You I, know. No, I don't know. I, 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 I guess don't everybody. <laughs> I don't know why they hiding. I don't care if you got rollers in your hair or your rap a rap right. Just, you know, you can unmute your video so that I can say hi. But I just want to thank you for opening up your hearts and opening up your ears tonight to what I shared. I pray that it was a blessing for you and that you can see and utilize a piece of it to actually help you, hey, <laughs> to help you to just go to that next best version of who you are. You know, I, I see too many people suffering in silence, not really talking about the things that they need to do to get to that next level and to open up themselves to possibilities. I feel that we have to extend our faith in a way that we never have be before to really believe that we are the bosses and the CEO chicks that we were made to be. And not to let anything or anyone get in the way of the execution of your action. No matter how long it takes, no matter how difficult it is, you will win because you were born to win. And winning is relative to your assignment. And for me, that's being in alignment and in being obedient to what God has for me. That's winning. So it's not a monetary number. And it's not saying that you don't need money to have leverage and to have choices, right? Who was it? Rita Davenport that said money isn't everything, but it sure is up there with air. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that we're doing things just for the money. We'll get the additional abundance and blessings so that we can be a bigger blessing. But we first have to shift and pivot in this. That's, I just finished doing a training about that earlier, shifting and pivoting to challenge ourselves to go where we never have gone before. And I say to you, as I say to myself, there's some things that I'm going to do that I've never done before. And it's unnerving, but it's also exciting because if we believe we can do all things through Christ, not some things, but all things that we move differently, our posture changes and our actions show the results. So thank you for allowing me to share some time and some space with you. I'm excited to hear about all of what CEO Chicks is doing. I love the Dominate Conference and, you know, who knows, maybe pass my cross and I can come and do a full-blown training for you in person and hug your neck. Oh, don't do that. Head. Don't you do and, and we're see, And we're being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> because it is. It's so much. And we want it all. We want it all. Like, like I said, like we want to leave you empty on tonight. And we thank you so much. Rose, I don't know if you are still on. You just got yourself one of Dr. Grant's, uh, the action, action without distraction. Did I say that right? Action, action, despite the distraction. Action, action, despite the distraction. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I'm going to give you, because you talked about a uh, shameless plug. Rose, you're still there? Okay, Rose, you got yourself a book, okay? Aww. You got yourself a book. I'm going to purchase the book, and I'm going to gift it to you. You are so faithful. And you showed your face. Come on now. Yes, absolutely. Let's you, get the book. <laughs> Tell us how we can find you, Dr. Grant. So you can find me if you go to actionactionbook.com. That's one of our websites. And my social media handles are on that website, Action Action Book. And Rose got the book, but all of you can get the first chapter for free by going to actionactionbook.com. You can also go to Faithpreneur Weekend for those of you who said, hmm, what's that Faithpreneur thing? I think I resonate and that resonates with me. Then you can check out Faithpreneur 
weekend.com and faithpreneurmastermind.com. That's the movement. We're creating a tour going all across this country, about 10 or so cities in 2019, where I'm meeting with faithpreneurs in these different markets as we prepare for our next Faithpreneur Weekend 2K19. So that's just a whole nother level of work and excitement and training personal growth and development that we'll be doing. But the bottom line is, if you want to just hit me up on social media, I tag CEO Chicks on my page tonight. Uh, excited about being here. So you can connect with me on social media on Destiny Design U or on my name, Stacey NC Grant. NC like North Carolina, but doesn't stand for North Carolina. Uh, Grant, and that's <laughs> on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I just look forward to hearing what you're doing and just excited about how you P3 your business and take it to the next level and just win. I get excited when I see other people win and I collect black girl magic. You know, some people say that they collect shoes and they collect jewelry. I collect black girl magic. That kind of brilliance to me is just sexy and it's just out of control. And I just it love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so thank you, Shelly. I love you and proud of you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for this opportunity to share. Absolutely. Uh, we just speak blessings over each and everything that you touch. And we know that it's going to turn into gold. God is so awesome. It's an open heaven right over you. The mm. glory is shining from you. And we just glorify God for all that he is doing. Eyes have not seen in the mm. mighty name of Jesus. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for being with us on tonight and uh, we will definitely be touching um base with you about our dominate conference <laughs> since you put it out there we love you thank you so much for all that you've done for us tonight be blessed thank you so Chase, you thank you for logging on tonight and don't forget to catch the replay awesome 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 keep pushing ceo chicks full throttle we are finishing strong no matter what it looks like Finish right. strong in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Okay.